What I'll be tying today is a woven hair hackle dry fly. Uh, the weaving technique that I will use for the hackle was one originated by George Grant. And this fly uh, was really not possible until George came up with his weaving technique. And so uh, what I'm going to show you, in, I'm not going to weave an entire hackle. I have some uh, woven ahead of time, but I want to show you the technique and, and how it's done. Uh, the very first thing is you need to sort from deer hair and the deer hair has to be long. Ideally, they recommend, uh, George recommended about two inch deer hair. It is hard to find deer hair of, of that length. And uh, I did find some longer hair, which is suitable for weaving. And I got it through uh, Chris Helm at Whitetail Fly Tying Supply in uh, Ohio. And I highly recommend that you get a hold of Chris if you ever need any deer hair of any type because he knew exactly what I was doing and he knew exactly what I needed. So just in general, here's the process that you go through for the sorting, is you, you cut some off of the hide and then you, uh, you remove it right at the base of the hide and then you take a small comb and you comb out all of the under fur and uh, the little uh, guard hairs that are the shorter ones. You comb all of those out and then you stack what you have and so you just use the brass stacker or whatever type of stacker you have you even up the ends and then again you grab the ends from here and you pull at the bottoms and you pull out even more so you're actually you're you're not using a whole bunch of that bundle that you uh, that you took out However, that's what you have to do because uh, there are different lengths and in order to get the lengths that you need, the longest ones, this is what you need to do. So then you stack it again and then what you would do to make the bundles, you need bundles of, of uh, five strands and you will need 30 bundles of that which is what you weave. And so. Uh, when I used the elk hair, when I did the sandy mites and flies like that, it's considerably longer. And you can take that and you can bundle the ends of it and still have plenty to work with. The deer hair is not that forgiving. So what I do is literally work out of the stacker, stack it, come out, separate five bundles from this, or pardon me, five fibers for each bundle. And then you take this and you can, you would have, what I use is just a water-based clear acrylic finish. I put that in a bottle cap and then you trim the ends of these off even and then you you dip that into the glue or which you know the the finish you dip that in and then you set it on a board which would be similar to this and that's one bundle of five and then you can you keep doing that until you have uh, 30 bundles is what this will take but that's the basic sorting process and how that is done now the weaving process for that is is done on a on a thread. This is six aught unit thread, and it's sufficiently strong to do this. And uh, I don't recommend anything under six aught. You want to go as thinly as possible on these, but I don't recommend anything under six aught because you do need the strength so that you don't break it. So what I do is I have here marked on the table. I have 12 inches uh, marked, and you so you want roughly 24 inches of this thread. And so you go with the 24 inches, you double it over, and then you'll tie a surgeon's knot in it, which is two overhand knots. And you measure this at seven inches. Again, I have that marked on the table here, but at seven inches, you tie two overhand knots, you moisten it. I find of great use in this is a crochet hook for tying these knots in this. So you just do two overhand knots and then at two inches from that knot you tie another knot. Now as you will probably see here I have a, uh, a pin with the plastic head on it which is what uh, you use to hold the thread and I have what is known as a weaving post. 
And this is uh, something that I obtained from uh, Todd Collins in Butte, Montana. And uh, Todd has all of these weaving supplies for the George Grant type flies. And uh, he is, uh, he's available for, for any of these materials. And like I said, he has the weaving posts and I'll be showing you a couple more tools that are essential to this that Todd also has. So what you want is to do these two strands, I mean this, this thread, and then you want it tight, but not too tight because you don't want to break it. You have to, you have to work with it there. And I have, I have some bundles that I glued up ahead of time, which I will use on these. And I'll show you how the weaving process is done. Now this tool that Todd has is one of the essentials. What this is, it is a gauge and it, that is silver soldered onto hackle pliers. And as you can see, I have different marks for different gradations on this. These are actually going to be about 3 eighths inches long, which is what this lower mark is right here. That's 3 eighths of an inch. And so what you do is you take, this is one of the glued bundles of five of the deer hair. And so you take that, you take it on the gauge, let me get these threads out of the way here, you take it on the gauge and I go to the 3 eighths of an inch mark, which you can see the lower mark there, I have them lined up with that. Okay, now this is, elk hair is much easier to weave than the deer hair, but you need the deer hair for the dry fly because of its, flo its floating qualities. So I've got this a little bit too tight and I want to loosen it up just a little. So I'm just moving the base here. There, that's better, a little better tension. Okay, with your left hand, with your index finger and your thumb, you drop it down through, through the threads. You use your right hand to open that up. Then you switch hands, hold it with your right hand. Now, this is important that you use your middle finger and your thumb and you pinch both the hackle pliers and the deer hair. Then you come up underneath with your right hand, you go around, you pull that up tight, you come back between your fingers. If you don't do that, the hackle pliers will have a tendency to drop down and then the specific height that you need them to be will be too long. You want that to stay right up against the thread. Okay, I've come around. Now this is why you use your middle finger and your thumb because you need your index finger to drop it back down between the thread there. You drop it between the thread and then you come back around and you do a half hitch. Now again, the deer hair has a tendency to crinkle and all and you have to kind of finesse it in, into position. And there's your first one. And you can see that you have the butts here and you have the hackle there. I'll do one more to give you some idea again of how that's done, but you just, now one thing I did not do here, but I do recommend you do, if you're, because if you're doing, this is woven out to seven eighths of an inch in length, and you should wax that periodically because you'll get the friction of the deer hair against it, and it can definitely break your thread after a while. So when you're weaving, you know, 30 bundles onto it, which comes out to about seven eighths of an inch, you need to wax the thread. So anyway, middle finger, thumb, come up underneath, take it around, pull this back between your fingers. Now open up the thread, drop the butt of the glued bundle through there, and then you come up and you go through again. Now you may have noticed that one of those deer hair strands broke. That is not a big deal on this fly because you're going to trim the butts off so they're actually part of the hackle. They're going to be about half, about half. So you just continue to do this until you have a fully woven deer hair hackle. I'll do one more just real quickly. 
you get in a rhythm on this and it's, it's very simple to do. So around, down, through, and I, one little thing that I do there I've noticed is that I tend to use both thumbnails and push the butt against the other one. So then you just continue on with this hackle and then you, do, you would do 27 more bundles of, of the five fibers. I'm not going to continue on with that. I'm going to just, that's the basic weaving process. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to start tying the fly. I have some hackles that I wove ahead of time and you can see what I'm talking about when I talk about the, uh, the length of seven eighths of an inch for one of these, these uh, dry fly hackles. And I have this one pinned here. You can see how this is, this is longer and then I have trimmed the butts off about half the length of the 3 8 inch uh, guard hair fibers there. So that's what the hackle is going to look like when I uh, wrap it on. So I'll take this out and readjust the vise and put a hook in. Now these flies, uh, like I said, George Grant originated these. Uh, George, a legendary tire in, in uh, Butte, Montana. And uh, George tied some flies commercially, his black creepers and ones of that sort, but he never tied these commercially. Uh, he did them for personal use and, you know, as probably gifts for friends. They're time consuming and the weaving process is pretty time consuming on these. And so that was one reason probably that he never did them on a commercial basis. But he did feel that his, his uh, technique of weaving the hackles, that, that, was, that dry flies were probably one of its best uses because it did allow you to use uh, material like deer hair, which is very, as you know, hollow and it floats extremely well. So to tie his fly, what you do, it's, it's a totally different technique. You essentially tie it backwards. Well, not totally backwards because you still start from the front, but you start, you move back to about the middle point of the fly, middle point of the shank. Then you come back forward. Now, right behind the eye, you are going to build up a little bit of a thread uh, build up a little bit of thread right here with about three wraps. I'm going to do a little bit more, three or four wraps. Okay, now the hackle is the first thing that's, that's tied in after the thread and that's where it definitely deviates from a standard fly. So what you do, and it's a, it's a little bit more complicated to do it this way because normally you have your materials out to the back when it's out over the front of the fly, you have to go around a few more things when you're doing it. But this hackle will be tied in right here. Now you want to cinch this down to about a sixteenth of an inch from the shank. And then you just go on back with this thread. Cinch it down very well. The last thing you want is for that to pull out on you. So, I've gotten it back, and I go on back to about the midpoint here because we're going to wind the hackle back. Now, you want this pointing toward you, the guard hairs, and the very first wrap, you will not get any hackle at all going, going on, on the hook. This is just that sixteenth of an inch that we gave. Now, once it gets here, these fibers are actually going to point out over the eye. That's how this fly is tied. It's, it's similar in some ways to the funnel done where the hackle is tied out over the front. So these take a lot of finesse to get them tied in correctly. And as I said, those clipped butts are an important part of, of this fly. 
They help with the flotation and they're an integral part of, of it. So what I'm doing is I'm working those out over the eye and including the butts in the tie, as you can see. And as I said, they can take a little bit of finesse. It's not nearly as easy as working with the elk hair. So I'm just going to continue to pull these out over the eye. And then just cinch that down. And I'm going to go ahead and clip a couple off the back because there's a couple that just took their own path, which is not really a problem. And then just trim them off. I am going to make mention of these scissors. I get these from Chris Helm at Whitetail Fly Tying Supply. He has them made for him in Germany to his specifications. He goes to the factory and they are not inexpensive, but they are worth every penny. Once you have used a quality pair of scissors like this, you will not use anything else. And again, I highly recommend these. Now what I'm doing is just working those fibers back up a little bit. Which reminds me, I'm looking real closely here. Another product I just would like to say something about is these glasses that I'm wearing. Uh, some of you have probably not seen these. These are called clicks, and they have a magnetic catch in the middle. So when you're using them, you can take them off like this or you can just put them back on. I have several friends who bought pairs of these because they kept losing their other glasses and they haven't lost a pair since. These are very, very handy. Okay, so now I'm just going to take this to the back and I'm also going to remove this weaving post at this point so it doesn't get in my way. So as you can see, the hackle goes forward. Now, I'm not going to take the thread all the way to the back. At this point, I'm going to put in a tail. And it's going to be a, a badger hair tail. Uh, these are badger guard hairs. Again, this is some weaving materials that is, are used for things like uh, well, some of the Grant stoneflies, but also some of his, uh, like the lady mites that were Franz pot flies. This is badger hair. And again, uh, Todd Collins uh, can get you this material. He, he imports it in large quantities and then he, uh, he sells it in packets like this. And as you can see, it has, you know, beautiful coloration to it. It's a good stiff material and it's appropriate for a fly like this. So I will measure the tail, and I'm sure most of you know the standard length on a tail is from the tip of the eye of the hook to the, to the bend of the shank. So that is what you want on the very back. Now clip that off. Now, I just come forward tightly with the material. And you just smooth out the body on this. This is actually a very slim taper on this fly. And the body is nothing but thread. Could you dub it? Yes, you probably could. However, when you get to the front, you're still going to be able to use nothing but thread because you're probably wondering at this point how I'm going to finish off this fly. 
Okay, the fly is finished off in the front with a whip finish. Uh, George used to use a piece of thread on a stick, a loop, and then he'd cut it and he'd pull it back through. The Mattarelli whip finisher was not available at that point. The large Mattarelli whip finisher works great for this. You still have an issue with some of these fibers, you know, sticking out in the back a little bit, so you have to be a little careful. But that's how you do it. And I'm sure some of you know too, when you're going to trim off the thread, don't use the snipping part of the scissors. Just take the blade of the scissors and just hold it against it and put a little tension on it. It gives you a nice close cut. So that is a woven hair hackle dry fly. Obviously, it's limited to certain sizes. I'd say 10s and 12s are probably its optimum. This is a size 10. I did this on a, uh, a Daiki 2421 steel head hook and uh, that is what is recommended for well, that, that's what I use. George actually used the uh, Mustad 94840, which can certainly still be used, or any other comparable dry fly hook. But uh, I like the look of the up eye, and uh, he used to do these in colors of gray, yellow bodies. You can also do them with a peacock tag on the back, so it looks somewhat like the Royal Coachman. But essentially, that's, that's the basic way of tying the, the woven hair hackle dry fly.